All right, day three, we're looking at it right now. This is day three of our lesson seven. This is the moon phases booklet that we've been working on. Day three looks like this. As we're looking at it, hopefully by the end of this, you can explain how the moon is shaded as it revolves around the earth, as well as maybe create a model that shows what the moon would look like from outer space, half of it lit, half of it dark. And we'll explain this as we go forward. Let's look at slide number 24. Let's review what day two said. Well, day two said that for the moon to rotate once on its axis, it takes 27.3 days. What about the second question? How long does it take the moon to revolve once around the earth? The answer there is 27.3 days. For it to spin on its axis and for it to go around the earth at both those take 27.3 that's why the moon's always facing us and we only see one side of the moon we don't see both sides slide 25 if we're looking at the earth and moon from space or from the top what does the moon look like as it revolves around earth well the moon is a sphere s-p-h-e-r-e -E. that's a circle in three dimensions it's a sphere the moon is a sphere as the moon revolves, we always see that half of the moon is lit up by the sun at all times. Half the moon's lit up by the sun at all times. Now, let me give you an example of what this looks like. Here I am holding a dodgeball. Looking at a sphere, if the sun is shining from one direction, half of the sphere will always remain lit, and the other half will remain dark. The front half that faces the sun is lit by the sun. The back half is dark. The moon is a grayish color all the way around. But when only half of it is in the light, the other half is in the dark. The front half that faces the sun is always lit by the sun. No matter if you spin it or not, the front half is always lit by the sun. The back half is always dark. So once again, the part that faces the sun is lit up by the sun. The part that's not facing the sun is dark. Slide 27. So when we are looking at the earth and the moon from space, half of the moon is lit up by the sun at all times. We could show this by creating a model. Now, as the moon revolves around the earth, we show the moon in that gray box. I want you to put the number eight. We show the moon in eight different locations around the earth. Okay, let's create a model. This is our last slide for day three before we go into our model work. But in this situation here, each of these moons that you see can be clicked and drug to those little asterisks on the orbit. And as you do that, there are eight strategic positions that we will talk about when we talk about moon phases that happen. And so this right here is what our moon would look like. Earth goes in the center for our diagram. All of the lit sides of the moon are facing forward towards the sun, the dark sides on the back. Now you might be saying, Mr. Jensen, what about this moon right here? Why in the world is that moon lit on the front when the earth seems to be blocking it. I mean, come on, Jensen, what in the world is going on with that? It's a great question, and I'm gonna answer that for you right now. Remember that the earth is actually 30 earths away from the moon. This is not to scale at all for distance, not to scale. This moon, remember, would be monitors and monitors away. We would have to send this thing all the way out 30 Earths away. So the spacing is actually pretty far away. But in this model, we're not really so concerned about the size and the distance. We just want to show a model of the moon as it is in that way. But remember, this is not to scale. Now, I'm going to flip over to the next one. Underneath your assignment, Lesson 8, Moonlight Model Practice, Right there is the assignment that I want you to look at now. This is a practice. Slide two starts out like this. 
the sun is up here. So I have to take my moon, put it in place, but then this little tail here, I click and drag it. I have to spin my moons around so that my moons face the direction of the sun like this. Oh my goodness, Mr. Jensen, I get it now. All the moons face the lit side towards the sun. I'm going to do this a little bit faster and I'm going to cheat because I'm just a cheater butt. All the moons should be facing the lit side up towards the sun. This one, it's on the right hand side. So again, everything should be facing on the right hand side. I'm going to cheat so that you don't have to watch me do individual ones. I'm just going to spin these babies around and click and drag them so that our model looks correct and the lit side of the moon is on the right side. The dark side is on the left side like this. Here's one more. This one's kind of in a weird position. It's kind of angled like this. So we got to spin it so that the lit side of the moon always faces the sun like what we're doing. And in this situation, it's kind of like a game a little bit, like a puzzle. Earth always goes in the middle. There you go. What about this one? There's nothing on it. That's because it's on the next slide. This one, you can create your very own slide. Control X helps you copy or cut. And then Control V paste it. Let's take our sun and let's put our sun anywhere we want. Shoot, let's put our sun right here. Why the heck not? Sounds like a good idea. Let's highlight these. I'm going to point them towards the sun and then just strategically put them in their eight different spots. And before you know it, we're going to have a finished model of our earth, moon, and sun as seen from space. There you go. Once you get that done, slide seven is where I gave you your stamp of approval. If you did it correctly like I just showed you, you got a boom stamp. There you go. That is how you work with models of the Earth, Sun, and Moon showing where exactly those would be aligned with the lit side facing the sun. Hope that was a good lesson for you. Have a good day and we'll see you back here tomorrow.